graphing logarithms and their transformations. Take some notes. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. How to graph a log function. Number one, create a table and a graph and graph the exponential inverse. After you do that, option number one is invert the table and plot the points. Option number two is plot the points of the inverse and reflect them over the line y equals x. Either method will work. Okay, so first you need to know some background knowledge. Logs are the inverse of exponentials. So if I have log base two of x, the inverse of that is y equals 2 to the power of x. This is the knowledge that you need to know. Okay, so I'm going to graph the exponential function. Ta-da! That's what the exponential function looks like. Now, what I need to then do, now that I've graphed the exponential function, I need to now reflect these points across the line y equals x. This is the line y equals x. And a property of inverses is that if I reflect those points across that imaginary line, I will get the inverse. And in this case, that would be log base 2 to the x. So first reflect that point. This is our second reflection point. Third, fourth, and then our fifth. So look, it's a perfect mirror image. Okay? The other option is I could have made a table, right? And when I made that table, I could just flip the points the x's with the y's and plot those points. So if you have a fancy TI 84 plus or 83, I think they do the same thing, plus CE, we're going to graph the inverse first. So we're going to graph y equals 1.25 to the power of x, right? So here's my little table. Okay, if I'm looking at a little calculator, the calculator, I'll punch, a little, punch, a, punch it in. I press second and graph, and I'm going to get the table. Boom, it's the same table of values. So if you need to figure it out on the calculator, you have that option with the technology available to you. Okay, so then what you do is you take that table and you invert the values. Okay, so is it coming so we'll plot those points whatever we did that method already okay so when I take the table I can invert those values so instead of negative 2 comma 0 0.64 it's 0 0.64 comma negative 2 instead of 0 0.8 instead of negative 1 comma 0 0.8 it's 0 0.8 comma negative 1 so on and so forth so we're just inverting those values so if I in inverted the values I didn't need to plot the purple one I could just go straight to plotting the blue one okay but just to show you that they would be the same, this is the line y equals x, right? And when I plot my points that I just got on my table, they're still going to be the mirror image. We're still looking good. You see me? You see me? Ta-da! So you can just mirror the points across the line y equals x. Or you can plot the points from the inverted table. Whatever suits your fancy. Let's talk about transformations of logs. Okay, so all transformations basically have the same thing where they have the, the x uh, minus h and then they have the k value and all that jazz, right? So notice that my k value for the logarithms is actually in the front. You see it? You see it? So it's actually in the front. So usually we have the plus k in the back. I put it in the front just because um, the book that we're using and the resources that we're using, the problems had the constant in the front, but sometimes the constants will be in the back. If, you, if you're doing logs right now, at this point in your life, that's not gonna throw you off, okay? <laughs> so, but the, they do the same thing. So if I have a negative, that's gonna be a reflection across the x-axis. The a value is gonna be my, shr my shrink or my stretch. My h is my horizontal shift, but remember it's the opposite of h, that's what minus means. And then, K is still going to be my vertical shift, so it's still going to be my up and down, okay? So that's basically what we need to know about logarithmic functions. So, it's a lot going on on the screen. The problem 
is the orange problem at the top. Y equals log base 2, X plus 3. Okay? So the first thing that we need to focus on is we need to talk about what that transformation is going to look like. Right? I have an H value. It's a plus 3, which really means go left three spaces. That's the, what you should be thinking about. So that's going to go left three spaces, all right? But remember, our proper procedure for graphing logs is, number one, you have to graph the exponential first. So we're going to graph the exponential of the parent function. So we're going to do y equals 2 to the power of x. So we're going to get our little table, negative 2 to positive 2, okay? Um, and we're going to plot those points. Swoop. Just to cover my bases, we're going to do our domain and range. All our numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, range is y is greater than 0. Not greater than or equal to greater than because remember there's an asymptote coming. And then 0 to infinity. So boop, boop, all the way up. Okay? So my asymptote is going to be y equals 0. But we have been knew that. You should know about exponential functions already. Right? This is my exponential function. This is the parent exponential function, okay? So now we're going to get the logarithm of that, all right? There's two ways you can do it. You can invert the table. So this is the first way, invert the table and plot those points. Or you can look at the line y equals x and reflect the points that you already plotted. Either one is fine, okay? Um, so we inverted the points. We're plotting those inverted points. They're still going to make a reflection across the line y equals x. That is my logarithm. Okay? My domain, because we're covering our bases, right, is y is greater than 0 or 0 to infinity. Notice that that's the same range as the exponential because we switched the domain in the ranges. That's what inverses do. Range, all row numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Notice that's the domain of the exponential. They switched places. Okay? So what's going to happen to the asymptote? That's what we got to figure out. What do we think is going to happen to the asymptote? The asymptote should also switch. So peep, peep game right here. It's going to be x equals 0 because it's going to be a vertical line now, not a horizontal line. Switch. You see that smooth transition? That was so good. We're not done, unfortunately, because we were not asked to graph y equals log 2 to the x. We were asked to... To, to graph the transformation of log base 2, x plus 3. So here's my logarithmic equation on the, on the graph already. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move it over three spaces to the left because that's what the transformation is. Now that I have the log on the screen, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move each point three spaces to the left. Okay. Um, first thing I want to move is my asymptote. My asymptote moves three spaces to the left. First point, three spaces. Second point, three spaces. Third point, three spaces. Fourth point, three spaces. Fifth point, three spaces. This, ladies and gentlemen, the orange one is going to be my transformation. So when I'm talking about the domain, y is greater than negative three. Um, negative three to infinity, okay? Uh, my range, all round numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, the range for a logarithmic equation is always going to be that. It's never going to change. And then my asymptote, remember we moved our asymptote three spaces to the left. So x equals negative three. I know you're like, wow, what a process. So much. Go on, get it started. I got, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> so Let's look at our problem before I get ahead of myself, right? So I have y equals negative 8 plus log base 3 to the x. What kind of transformation is this going to be? This is going to be a, sh a vertical shift down 8 spaces, right? So take the parent function, log base 3, and then find the exponential of that, which is y equals 3 to the x. That's what I'm going to make a table for, okay? just so that, and we're plotting those points. Okay. Just to cover our bases, we got domain, all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, y is greater than zero, zero comma infinity, y equals zero. Okay. Now, I can plot my points across the, oh, there's my asymptote. I can plot my points across the line y equals x. I don't even need to make a table. I could just mirror the points. Okay. Or I can invert the table and then plot the points. 
either one works. Notice that that table is the same table flipped. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and plot those points now that I have inverted the table. Okay, and look, it's a reflection across the line y equals x. My domain and my range are flipped, right? So my range for the exponential was y is greater than zero. Now that's my domain for the log. My domain was all row numbers. Now that's my range for the log. Okay, so what's my asymptote gonna be? Come on, people. X equals zero, good. Look at that rotation. Just, just move with it, smooth with it. Okay, sorry. Okay, but am I done? I am not done. I'm going to take that, okay? And now we're gonna apply the transformation. Now I know that everything needs to be moved down eight spaces, right? So this is my table and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shift all the points down eight spaces. And this is gonna be my log, okay? So now let's cover our bases. Now that we moved, the orange one is our log. So we're gonna do x is greater than zero, zero to infinity. That's gonna go ahead and check out. Remember that our domains and our ranges switch, right? from log to exponential. So that's why this looks like this now, okay? Um, our asymptote moved down negative, moved down eight spaces, but moving, if our asymptote is going on forever and ever, it doesn't look like it moved. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay. All right, last one. Um, yes, last one. So what we're gonna do, same thing. I skipped a step though. The step, that, the step that I skipped was graphing the exponential and then doing the inverse because it's the same parent function, it's log base three. So I already had the information for log base three, right? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to what this transformation is. So let's look at that equation, y equals negative four plus log base three x plus two. That little, little bit, like what are my transformations? There's two numbers that I'm messing with, okay? Let's do the H first. First of all, that plus two means that I'm gonna go left two spaces. And then that minus four in the front is my K value. That tells me I'm gonna go down four spaces, right? So my table of values reflects that each point and the asymptote is gonna move left two spaces And then that negative four, that K value down four spaces. So this is gonna go ahead and be my transformation. My domain, X is greater than zero, greater than negative two, negative two to infinity because our domain shifted negative two spaces. Right, our range is all row numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Our asymptote shifted, so x equals negative 2. And that is graphing logarithms in a nutshell. Okay? Um, hope you enjoyed that. Let me make sure this little thing... I just needed to make sure that we're still recording. So, yes. Um, that's it. What do I... Oh, go back to the video. See if you can get it without my help. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell somebody, tell your play cousins and your aunties and your best friend, sister's brother about me. <laughs>